And a very good morning to everybody and welcome to the pre-market rundown for Friday, February 12th, 2021. I'm Andrew Horowitz. I am the co-founder of Trigger Charts, and we're going to go through a lot of information this morning. Before we do so, I want to mention this disclosure, disclaimer at the top, that this is for educational purposes only. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. And of course, as with all investing, you can lose capital, all or part of it, by making uh, investments. And uh, make sure that you understand that you should uh, consider this only for educational and use your best judgment when investing. So here we are in the mid part of February. I think uh, the big buzz has been all around some of the hot meme type of stock names, right? This retail craze that they're turning uh, the, the attention to, which may or may not actually be all about retail. But that is what we're led to believe that the Robinhood traders and the retail investors are just in all of these hot areas, blowing them up, blowing them down. The latest discussion that we have is, well, look at they all turned towards the pot stocks. And if you see what happened there, they all jammed higher and then came down significantly. Of course, we have that along with the big news that Bitcoin hit an all time high above 48,000 and change just yesterday. Last night came in a little bit with that. I've done this before. I'm going to throw out a poll for you because I want to know a little bit more about what you're doing compared to where we did it last time. And once we get your answers, once we get your results from this poll, I'll kind of go through, well, how has it changed over the last, I think it was about six weeks ago we did this. So in front of you, you'll find uh, a poll that should have popped up somewhere or something's blinking on your screen somewhere. Uh, and uh, if you would fill that out, we'll go through we'll go through that in a second. I'll get to that in a second. So, uh, yeah, the pot stocks have been uh, the latest craze recently busted. Uh, we'll go through some of those stocks, and I'll show you really what you should have been looking for and how to either get on board, stay away from it, or maybe even get out of them. Oils and commodities, well, or I should say crude oil and energy and commodities. We have this reflation trade that is going on, continues to be so. It's been one of the hottest areas. If you look at some of the ETFs that invest primarily in energy-related energy stocks, then you have um, a pretty good idea of, of, of how strong this rally has been. And with oil approaching, we have Brent and we have WTI, but WTI approaching, what, 58 and change, and Brent over 60, there has been incredible turn, especially when we think about how there was that negative $40 per barrel print back in 2020, back in March, I believe it was. And a lot of that is due to the fact that there is the hope, the idea that we're going to use a lot more oil uh, as we open up, as we are driving more, as planes are flying, as boats are cruising, which kind of flies into the face of really what reality is and the fact there's a lot more electricity being used for the, uh, you know, for cars. And as we're going more and more towards electric or at least energy, uh, clean energy style, whether it's LNG that Amazon recently purchased uh, a massive um boatload of trucks from Cummings and Westport uh, WPRT. Uh, NASDAQ continues to attract bids. Right now, we're seeing the NASDAQ on the top here down about 40 on the futures. Uh, usually what we find is that right on the open, there is an incredible burst of excitement. And if that doesn't play out right about, I would say, 10 o'clock in the morning, there's another burst. And then at about 1230, it seems that there is a combination of market open play out the news, let's see what happens, wait and see, 10 o'clock, we start perking up again, things don't do so well, or if they do, European markets close, and then everybody starts trading over here. The futures on the, um, on, the, on the Dow are down about 45, on the ES down about 11. There's some fair value in here that will actually be a little bit better on the actual open. Bitcoin trading at about, right, about 47,600 right now. So with that, uh, the poll's about to close, so we got a couple of people that looks like need to vote so just do that and we'll just follow up on this and then come right back to it all right so one of the things i mean listen if if you've been following along with what has been going on and wondering hey what's happening and why are things doing is what they're doing why are we seeing these little bulges you may not want to call them bubbles why are we seeing these bulges in certain areas well what we're seeing is that the continuation of all the talk the continuation and continual talk the never-ending talk about stimulus, low interest rates for a very long period of time, 1,400 stimulus checks 
Where are they going? What are they doing? Well, they're making their way in the market. Have you looked at the stock of Rick, R-I-C-K? What is Rick? Well, Rick owns, you know what Rick is, right? I mean, look at this, look at this chart. Since the low, okay, back in March when it was about six bucks, all time high. It used to be called Rick's Cabaret. They own all the strip clubs. I mean, they're strip clubs. Obviously, we're seeing there's a lot of money being spent on things outside of necessities. Well, maybe some people think it's a necessity, but there is a lot of people that are trading uh, their, their, their stimulus checks for stocks. They're st trading their stimulus check for payment to strippers, it looks like, and for all other things like boats, cars, planes, you know, planes, trains, automobiles. So this is uh, leaking into the market, and what we're having is a lot of traders seeing that the market's going up, creating this frenzy. And we're, we're, we're looking at uh, things like what happened with uh, GameStop and AMC, Build-A-Bear, BlackBerry, and now the pot stocks. The feds are investigating whether market, market manipulation was uh, involved in the volatility for stocks like GME. That will end up being nothing. Robin Hood's going to come in, be subpoenaed. We'll find up some things. He'll get a slap on the wrist and, wrist and then we'll move on. That's what's going to happen. Let me end the polling real quick. And we have a short period of time to talk about everything. So uh, your favorite crypto trading instruments, 10% uh, of people are doing direct, original, directly with maybe uh, um, any of the platforms that we know about, Coinbase, et cetera. 10% are doing futures. 20% are doing ETFs. There's only a couple of those out there. 60% of you are doing no crypto trading. Now, this is not the same group, so this is not scientific, but here's the point, that about six weeks ago, there was about 80 plus percent that was not doing any crypto trading. Nobody was doing futures. Uh, there was a couple uh, percent on the ETFs and I think a couple of percent on direct. So we're seeing that a lot more people are getting involved in this. And that makes sense as this price just keeps on going up and levitates. You know, the scarcity value is pretty interesting in terms of that. We talked about this. I talked about this at length. If you haven't heard the podcast, write this down. Um, Anthony Pompliano, who is a, a major Bitcoin bull, major. Talking about the whole idea of digital finance, DeFi, uh, you know, the blockchain. We had a great discussion talking about all the elements on the Disciplined Investor podcast. So it was last week. It's running right now. If you want to check it out, I really encourage you to listen to that podcast um, because that, that does give you a really good insight of what's happening. The themes that we have going on right now. Well, the Fed continues to pump. We know that. The KRI is overheated to some clusters. Let me kind of take a look at that. Uh, and let me stretch this out. This is the key reversal indicator. I look at this on a regular basis. I want to know what's happening with the markets and exactly understand where we are from an overbought, oversold, overheated level. And what I look for uh, all the time is, is pretty much the same thing. It's pretty easy. This is one of those very easy to understand um, indicators. It only does one thing. That's all it does. It, it looks like this. You can't change anything. You don't want to change any of the symbols. You don't want to put anything else in because nothing else will work unless it stays right out of the box like this. What you want to do is find these key points of inflection where you're starting to see the overbought or oversold, right? Where you see some of these clusters forming or even some of these, see we have four of them right here. Uh, and then you start to see that rollover. Now we're starting to see that same situation uh, drive here. Now I wanna, let's see if I can do this here. Go out a little bit. Yeah, that's what I wanna do. Talk about this a hundred times and I just wanna explain this. Uh, basically what this does is, is a sentiment is also a look at like put call ratio. It has a whole, uh, a myriad of components that make this up to give us where we are from a broad market sense. And if it, we know that about 80% of stocks follow the broad market, well, we want to be aware of where we are in the trend of the markets. Because, you know, if I can kind of find an area where we're dipping down very significantly, uh, and that's not even a great dip, but, you know, negative two, negative, excuse me, negative three, negative four, uh, where we see that turn, we start seeing above the move and especially now where we're seeing these buy the dips that are all over the place and if i can see where there is a significant amount of cluster forming well that's significant you know this goes back to may and june but look i mean almost every time we see that move to the upside it takes a while and then all of a sudden pops we see this rotation and rotation down this is a standard market what it looks like 
on a daily basis. So I look at this and see where we are to see how much commit capital maybe we're looking to commit, what kind of um, levels we want to invest in, in terms of the overall. Uh, so, so in other words, if, if we have confidence that we want to enter a trade on the long side, for example, well, you know, if that is the case, and if we are actually inside of a uh, market where it is being it's, it's getting overheated, maybe I commit less capital to that trade than I usually would. So if I have a unit, let's say that is $5,000, $10,000, whatever your new unit is. If I have a unit that's $5,000, and uh, usually I'll enter a trade with a two unit up to a five unit, maybe I'll start with a one unit. And then look at where that goes from there. And if it comes in, maybe I'll add to that. As opposed to if I'm entering a market condition where we have a oversold situation going on, maybe I'll enter with three units at that point because the stock is probably down at that level. And then look to add on as it kind of gets up, moves up a little bit better. So just uh, something to consider, something to look at. I also mentioned in the... Uh, chat, you'll notice that you can get a special offer. Everybody here that doesn't have it needs to go get the free 10-day trial of any of the indicators that are available on the TradeStation Trading App Store. And once you convert and you are a subscriber, what you'll get is a four-hour course for free, valued at $199. Just email us at support at triggercharts.com. So what else do we got going on? Well, we have the impeachment thing going on, right? That's kind of a sideshow. Valuations are an issue. Uh, we have the narrative going back and forth with low interest rates are really good for the excessive valuations that we have on stocks. And at the same time, we have the increase in interest rates saying it's very good for stocks because it supports a, a economy that's growing and uh, the backdrop of a growth condition. So I guess you can have it both ways. But just note that you have a situation where uh, the talking heads will always talk about how it's good for stocks, no matter what the circumstance is. And, um, you know, long term, they're right. Short term, you know, it's kind of just spitting in the wind what they're talking about. Uh, another theme is the digital assets, right? Tesla and Bitcoin came out with the discussion Monday morning before the market opened and talked about how they're they're going to get involved. We also saw the MasterCard getting involved. PayPal said they're not going to put it on their balance sheet, but of course they are trading it. PayPal also looking to get into the stock trading business. Everybody's in everybody's business these days. So just keep a watch on how it is turning and, and we're seeing this significant amount of change in the industry right now. Be aware that uh, there's going to be a lot more availability on many different platforms, which is, I guess, a good thing. Economics, initial claims are over 750,000 in. Powell is admitting that employment is worse than it seems. He made a speech this week and he talked about how, you know what, even though we're seeing a 6.3% unemployment rate that came out last week. And by, by the way, what does that actually mean? Think about that for a second. You have a 6.3% unemployment rate right now with a 49,000 increase of jobs added last, uh, the most recent month, but more losses put on the books last month. And we went from a 6.7 to a 6.3. How is that even possible? Well, it's statistics. And that's why Powell had to come out and say, you know what? Hey, we realize that the numbers say one thing, but the reality when you take in consideration the errors that are being generated due to the fact that people who are on unemployment due to COVID are saying they're out of the workforce and therefore the labor participation rate is being dropped and all the different things that go into the statistical calculation of this, well, uh, what we're seeing is that it's more like a 10% unemployment rate. Duh. I mean, come on. Like, nobody thought that that was the case. Did everybody believe that 6.7% was really the unemployment rate? That the unemployment rate came down so much with 10 million people still without jobs due to the pandemic? Something was wrong with that. So realize that statistics and the information and the official numbers coming out of whether it's BLS or any of the other components are the only things that we have to go on, right? Same thing with China, same thing with the rest of the world. However, they may be rigged or they may be uh, distorted. The fact is those are the numbers that the markets key off of. And that's what we have to look at. You know, it's the same thing, for example, when you see headline numbers of a company beating earnings estimates, beating, guiding higher, all this that goes on. But you know what? It's not in context of, okay, well, they beat, but... Is that a beat on just what the analyst had? What does it look like one year ago, one quarter ago? How is a company progressing? You know, if a company, for example, fundamentally makes uh, $10 million 
and they beat because estimates were at nine million. But the company made 14 million last quarter, 18 million the quarter before, and the stock is now up dramatically and maybe even to all time highs. Don't we want to take a moment and look at what the components are of what is being reported to figure out if, in fact, this is a company that is bettering themselves over time to keep pace with the stock price? Ah, just something to think about. All right, what else do we have here? CPI remaining in range. Interesting, uh, even though. <laughs> Even though there is no inflation, I think we can all agree. Tell me, that. listen, chat me back on this. There is no inflation, but everything is costing more. Is that what you're finding? Hit me in the chat. I want to kind of see your opinions on this. And by the way, while you're in the chat, you can give me the stock symbols that you want us to review. We'll get to there in a second. I mentioned the KRI. It's actually a plus four right now, vacillating between a plus four and a plus five. Yeah. Yeah, people are coming in with, yep, price are up. Price are up. Yep, everybody's paying more. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I think it's pretty apparent, right? Earnings. Uh, we saw some impressive result. Uh, we saw that uh, Zillow pushed it, posted some really good results. iRobot, a few others, a couple other clunkers out there. Economics next week. Actually, next week is heavy. This week was light. Next week is heavy. Uh, we're going to be seeing uh, housing starts, PPI, retail sales. The FOMC minutes, we're also going to see Philly home sales, Philly, excuse me, Philly Fed home sales and inventories. Uh, we'll talk about some of this. Again, I talked about the four-hour coaching. So let's get to some of these stocks here. Let's see what's happening here. Uh, let me, uh... Okay, so the first one we talked about was space. Space is down about 10% uh, today after launching. <laughs> Pretty well yesterday. I mean, right within its range. Fifty dollars and ninety-seven cents is the support level that I kind of drew in here. We can get exact number here. It's actually fifty-one fourteen. Uh, we're not going to get it exact on here unless we go in. There we go. Close enough. Uh, that's the level we see it bounce off there several times. Really nice looking chart overall from a consolidation, then a breakout above. Then we get this flag pattern that's happening. Consolidation in the flag pattern over about a two-week period within the same range. There was a launch announced. This stock, obviously, is a SPAC. It is the Virgin Galactic. It is looking to take people to space. Richard Branson, Chamath Papalapadia, uh, however you pronounce his name. So just something to look at. Uh, I like this overall pattern. It is funky. On buybacks, I like to buy a little bit. I actually pulled out a good amount of my personal money. I bought this at about 10 so just a full disclosure. Uh, I pulled out my a good amount of my money as this thing ramped up, right about, you know, probably here at the 55, 56 range. Uh, I may look to actually add to this if we can get down closer to this level of support and have it hold. Sundial. Okay, the reason why I want to talk about this is one of the uh, pot stocks that happened. Uh, you probably know Tilray better. And even, even more so, um, let's actually stop for a second and let's look at the pot, the marijuana ETF. Now, this thing has been in a sideways action for a while. Took off. This is now uh, this daily. So let's look at this. In 2021, one from about 14, doubled up, right? Now, I thought this was going to be an interesting play after the November election as the potential for pot was going to be, um, you know, legalized on a more uh, active basis. And what we saw was that really didn't happen until, the, the move really didn't happen until the beginning of this year when everything, you know, speculative started moving very substantially. And then it just took off. And then the Reddit crowd got involved in it, of course, and just wrecked it all up pretty good, uh, up to about 35 and then turned down about 50% yesterday. Now, if you look at this pattern, there's a couple things up here that you really need to understand. And when I put this on here, for example, you'll see it even better. You know, when you get this radar, in part of the Commander series that we're looking at right now, you know, you get the altimeter, which are the three lines, you get the autopilot, which is the coloring and the signaling of um, biases on the long and the short side. And then you also get the radar, which gives you a granular view of the volume and price, uh, or we call it uh, basically the the important um, levels that you should be looking at. You know, one of the things that we really want to uh, see here inside of what we have a market profile is the shape. And we look at the shape here, and I've talked about this before, and I really want to bring this out on this one. We have this lowercase b. You see that that you could see right inside of here? Well, when you see something like that, you realize that there's really not a lot of overhead opportunity uh, once you get above, but yet more importantly, the potential for a drawdown is very strong back to support. There's not a lot of volume that goes up here. So this short squeeze that happened, 
uh, when you go up and you start moving uh, to to the upside here, was really at limited volume. And once you kind of broke down below about the 29 level, currently trading about 24, down about 5% today. Once you broke down about around the 29 level, that was really a problem. There's really no support here. We have no altimeters that are significant here. A brand new one was drawn yesterday. Baseline at about, uh, where was it? There we go. Uh, 21 and 14, but this range from 33 to 21 is a really difficult thing to really try to trade. So we go back to Sandile, and there's, uh, there's 20 of these names that you can look at. Down 17% today, but was as high as 396 yesterday. Did a major reversal down uh, yesterday. Uh, and again, not look, look at this. This is another, see the B here? Do we see that? If you just take a, kind of a mental pen, you can see the B uh, versus these kinds of ones. This is a capital B. This is a normal distribution of capital D. So when you see this kind of radar, you know, this one right here, you know that there really is not a lot of room inside of this area where there is no volume. And the potential to reverse is very high. So this could have been a really good short position for somebody. Tilray was the other one. Tilray also had the same kind of look uh, that we saw with MJ ETF because this is pretty much a big part of it, but basically the same, you know, little B right here uh, has a new altimeter form. Question came in, can we address, uh, can may address trigger charge in a strategy? Example of close is greater than a long entry than buy. Uh, we do not have this in a strategy, and I'll tell you why, because it's misused. Oh, I find that strategies are misused dramatically. Not every stock trades like every future, not that trades like every currency. And you have to really understand that while there are very clear signals that we color, you can see from the top part of the radar screen that gives you the alerts, of course, and the biases and where we are, down to the um, uh, radar and the, just the, the autopilot down here, as well as the altimeter. Uh, the problem is that I have found in my experience that when we create strategies, they are misused. And I'd much rather you take that extra 30 seconds once you get used to looking at the charts and make that uh, discerning decision by combining things like the aileron and looking where the trend is and where the mo uh, the momentum is, uh, where the, the axis is from the point of view of, uh, which is actually looks pretty good still, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and then also look at multiple time frames looking left because it's not just the one breakout. So let's see if I can give you a couple other ones here. Eh, GameStop, same discussion, right? This giant move up, this giant move down, kind of resting exactly where uh, it should. We push this, this is right about there. 45 is the low end. Probably got close to that the other day. Um, this is another stock that we've been looking at. Look, we, we can see that we have that box I drew that time before. 48.77 was an area that I thought, hey, that has to get above. But let's kind of look at this. This is SPAC also. There's a question that came in. How do we search for SPAC? Is there any notification of these stacks that once they make the exchange? So SPACs usually have like this weird look. You can kind of see them like this. They're like at $10 forever. Well, this one was a little bit higher. Uh, let, let me show you this, this because space will give us a good, I think. Oh, yeah. See that? That's telltale of a SPAC right there. See that tail at ten dollars forever, from two three nineteen to eleven twelve, and then somebody got you know wind of what this was. Uh, these long ten dollars are usually a SPAC. CC is another one. Look at that. See that tail down there. Now, how do you look it up? You know, that's a good question. Let's take a look at something. Let's bring up. Uh, bear with me. I think you just do a Google search of it. Spactrack.net. What we got here? Here's a bunch of them right here. Here's all your SPACs. Look at all of them. Woo! That's just up to C. <laughs> so we could probably go like SPCE. I don't know if that will work. Yeah, no found. Space. Let's do space. Oh, let's do no virgin. Yeah. So there's um Huh. No virgin. That's kind of interesting. Spack track. Oh, because it's pre it's post it's post IPO. So you get a pre-IPO uh that come out here. Uh these are the pre-IPO tech and 
how much money they listed and how much money they got in there. I mean, look at the look at the amounts here. ACAH. ACAH. Let's look at that. If that even comes up. ACAH. No. So these are pre-IPOs. Uh was that the right symbol? ACBA. I don't think these will come up. But you can keep a watch when they do. So those are not coming up. So we got to go uh, recent IPO. No recents. Oh, boy. All right, let's just go to tech for the heck of it. What, what is the problem here? Maybe this isn't the best place. But anyway, you can go find. Let's go. Maybe I'm still, I don't know, something I'm not doing right here. Anyway, you can go look those up and find them. There's all sorts of ways to, to find all those. Um, QS, okay, back to this for a second. We're looking at this one, and uh, this one does lithium batteries. Kind of interesting. So where is it trading right now? I want to I want to get close in here. Right now it's trading at, what, 50, 51 a quarter. So it's right above, that's kind of good. It's right above this line, 50, 40. Uh, you still have some overhead resistance at about 54 up about 14%. Who knows what the news is today? It could be anything. I thought this was an interesting one. Pet Med Express. Now, what I this this was that whole mania that went on with um, all the, the 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 GameStop and some of the pot stocks, and there was a big move up. And I'm not sure if there was earnings there, but what I do like about this is if you were to draw a line on this, and I think this is an interesting stock to take a look at uh, from a, from a fundamental standpoint as well. But if you take a look at this, we bought this for our clients yesterday, actually, full disclosure. Um, you know, about 34, 35, we'll call it round number has been support currently trading at 36 up a little bit this morning, but that's on light volume trades a little bit on light volume. We're seeing that we still have some momentum on the upside, not terrific, but yet I will say it is above the zero line here. Momentum came down as we saw this move down, but look at this nice, placement right here you have a defined level where you're going to get out you know really you got another really good level at about 31 and a half so trying to look at a one unit type of entry into this kind of interesting stock i thought laser we've been talking about this range that has been trading in up nicely yesterday up about eight percent and of course what we're finding is uh, up one day down the next up one day down the next so what you look at here is down a little bit today but get above that level we got to keep it above this level about 34.50, I'll just get the exact number, 34.28 is the exact number, and you kind of have this really good range that could take off here. CCIV, uh, uh, Churchill Cap, another, uh, they're looking at uh, doing, the, the rumor is that they're going to do the um, the IPO for, uh, oh, what's the name of that car company, Lum uh, Lumens, no, that's eh, the other nice car company. Any electric EV car company, somebody probably can give me the name of this. Uh, anyway, they're, they're, it's uh, it's uh, Lucid, Lucid Motors. And um, so this has been kind of going on rumor. It seems a little bit pricey to me, to be honest with you, above its level. I think the downside risk back to 26, as we saw recently, is pretty high, uh, but it was held really nicely there. If you look at some shorter term charts, they're showing up pretty well. AMAT been a, just, a, just a killer. Above the line, you're seeing this nice move. You can somehow call this a flat base cup and handle concept, uh, but it did close above. SMH been on a tear. Also, this is the semiconductors, major shortage of semiconductors. What other ones do we want to look at? Uh, Tiger, somebody gave me this uh, recently. Uh, Tiger is uh, considered the, I think, I haven't really looked at this, but it's the it's the UP FinTech. It's, it's the uh, uh, Robin Hood of China, supposedly. Look look at this before you take that for absolute. But it's, it's a FinTech company, trading company, really launched off. Uh, as this is going on. I mean, as long as trading stays, you would think there's some opportunity. I was kind of surprised that we didn't break down recently on all that that went on, but maybe they're opening up a lot more accounts than we think. Edit, uh, this uh, failed the 6067 level that we had written in here, uh, currently trading at 56 and change. Same thing with CRISPR, had a beautiful move up and it's been trailing down lately. Uh, on a little bit of a support level here, you know, I'd expect this stock to hold probably in the 150 range, <clears throat> but now we're starting to see this rollover. Um, I ran this up from about $40 personally, uh, had this as a, just a long-term hold. It really wasn't uh, more of a, more of a idealistic type of name, sold a chunk of it up here, uh, right around here, this, uh, 170 range or so, 180s, uh, and have just this very small piece left right now. Uh, Blink, this is the charging company we've been talking about. Everybody asks about all the time, and this is uh, doing pretty well. So pretty interesting. 
uh, holding support right now. We'll see what happens. Fundamentally, not the strongest, but overall it looks like a pretty good opportunity. That's going to wrap it up for today. I want to thank everybody for joining me. Market's about to open. Dow Jones futures uh, down a little bit, uh, down about, uh, what do we have? There we go. The market's open. Uh, usually we see that ramp happen. Let's kind of watch for that on the morning. And you guys have a great weekend, elongated weekend, and I'm going to see you again next week.